Welcome back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. I should be seeing what's going on on our lovely island of Fauna Hero today. Um, where we'll be chill out per usual. Uh, what am I going to talk about today? That's a good question. You know what I can talk about? Um, of, uh, the, amazing the Amazing Digital Circus episode 2 was released. It's pretty cool. One of the actual like TV, more popular TV series, I suppose, around nowadays. Um, which I've, <laughs> I've actually seen. You know, the fact I've not seen like any of a hell of a, the hell of a bus or the um has been hotel episodes but um yeah uh, i mean uh, digital circus it's i thought it was a, a grand old fun jaunt the first one so i was excited i was interested to see what the second one is and i also think it's quite a fun old jaunt hello everyone right now in phone hello it's 2 22 p.m on saturday may 4th 2024 may the 4th be with you of course as well happy star wars day or i don't know if that's the official name for it but there you go hey ho um yeah i'm, I'm not really gonna go into spoilers or anything about it um I don't think so. Like, I mean, it, it it's not an episodic series, but it doesn't also feel like a series where like spoilers matters that much. At least I don't think it just kind of feels like a, a wild ride, I suppose, from start to finish. Um, but I don't know. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, the animation is very cool. Uh, I love the designs of the characters and that sort of thing. And I think my favorite part of it is, um, I suppose, it's how it sort of like taps into that very nostalgic feeling of these sort of like retro PC games about all that jazz how wet how honestly how very fun it is for it to incorporate um like what used to be like glitches that you would see in games or things like that or these like sort of weird wacky movements into the actual animation style it has going on sort of like an epitome of like um you know art has rules but you need to know how to break them i suppose as well <laughs> it's it's a, it's a very very fun thing and uh this, uh, this episode too was uh, super super fun um i thought as well i mean <laughs> The fun depending I suppose like again okay I, I guess I'll have m minor illusions to what happens in the episodes but I'm not going to spoil things because I'm not here to do like an analytical deep dive I'm sure if, it, it's popular enough you can have your own character deep dives if you want and plus you know I'm not going to judge it until the entire series comes out right because I, I believe this is the first of a few <laughs> I don't know how many um, but it's a fun one like uh, the, the, the characters which are introduced I think it gives an interesting sort of uh, look into um, the world of uh, of this digital circus I suppose or a, a deeper look into it as well um, if you didn't see what was going to happen I suppose towards the end of the episode then I can only say sorry about that <laughs> uh, no, uh, saying sorry makes it sound like I had any like cause or influence over it I, I certainly didn't um, but I, I thought the writing was very much underworld. It, it very felt like on par with that sort of thing. I, I can only imagine, I can only imagine how upset, I suppose, the internet fandom is going to be with it. I mean, it's, um, it's a, I'm sure a very scary time for the creator of Gooseworks, right? Um, it's Goose something, certainly. Um, she's like the creator of the uh, digital circus. She, she has, she's, I, I've seen some of her stuff like on Tumblr here and there, but, um, I wasn't particularly familiar with her work at I suppose until Digital Circus. Um, I, I must imagine it's a very scary time, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, no, no, I don't mean like um, scary in the way it was like, oh, you know, something I created is like being seen by millions of people. Of course, that's scary. But it's a different sort of scary from, I, I, at least my own personal interpretation of, you know, something being popular and mainstream and something being internet popular and mainstream, um, where, you know, it's, how do I describe it? Like, things which develop like fandoms around it. We sort of internet fandoms feel like pretty different. Like I'm trying to think, like you know, what what other things that are like fall into this category? Definitely, if we're going back old school, we've got like Homestuck and Undertale very much sort of fit into it. Um, I think Hello, like all, all the Vivzy Pop sort of like creations are kind of like falling into it now with Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss. I don't know why I said all of them. But I guess there's only two, and um, there's probably more as well, but I don't know them. Um, like these sort of like things where I, I guess how I describe it is the fandom is big and is very much localized online on the internet um compared to things which are mainstream but also popular um offline as well you know like some things are very popular offline and sort of like bypass this at least this image of i suppose the fandom in my head and i don't mean it in like a disparaging way but fandoms as i often say are the most fascinating things they can be the most beautiful amazing loving communities and also they can hold some of the most toxic uh people you've ever seen but also at the same time you also hold probably a lot of fans who maybe I, I don't know maybe they maybe maybe young impressionable teenagers or things like that who often you know when given 
uh, free range of internet uh, in certain degrees say random stuff like I'm sure that when you were a teenager well if you are a teenager I suppose and get ready for it um, you probably said like some really stupid stuff which you look back on and you just cringe on I mean myself included I, 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 that's part of character growth I suppose is seeing yourself evolve as a person and understanding the mistakes that you've made before in the past and being like uh <laughs> I'm glad I know better now it's if, if anything it's a sign of like yeah it's a sign of development I suppose right are showing like yes you, you now understand yourself more fully and understand the, the consequences of like things you know like what you act etc etc um the, the, the interesting thing i think actually is that digital circus to, i mean it, it's kind of weird because it has like quite a sort of child friendly family friendly aesthetic to be perfectly honest i mean look at the characters they're like i mean it, it's by design right they're meant to be they're meant to look like family friendly sort of like cartoon characters designs or something that maybe would not look out of place in like a maths educational video game or something like that is maybe the sort of vibe you get from them um but i, I mean not really something I, I would necessarily <laughs> give my kids to watch. I mean, I don't have kids. If I had children, uh, I wouldn't necessarily be like, hey, you should watch this. Maybe if they were like teenagers, I'd be like, fine, sure, whatever. But um, I mean, it, it, do it doesn't really give a vibes of something which is, oh, we have exactly 10,000 points. Okay, exactly 9,000 points. Um, it doesn't, at least to me, it doesn't really give a vibe of something where it's like, yeah, this is like fine for my six year old to watch on the iPad or something. But as I understand it, it probably has that sort of appeal as well, which must be a, a doubly sort of scary thing because one, you're dealing, I suppose, with. Um, like child protection laws and that sort of thing and um content which is um available to them as well and you know and i don't okay, like i'm not and really much of an online creator i mean technically you might be like oh did i you create these videos okay yes true um so the very still of a conscious i suppose thought of uh, the impression that you give off to especially people who are younger more impressionable etc etc um because i, I mean a thing with the internet is how like a lot of these communities end up being like so well, communities in general can be quite secular and it doubly goes with the internet especially with things like algorithms pushing things related to the things that you're interested in or you seeking out specific communities based around a property but you tend to get like a very sort of tunnel vision view of a world right um which means that basically what i'm trying to say is that if you consume something like this it will be like one of the only things can you consume and i must imagine that as a creator if you create something like that you're like yeah you have to make sure that you give the right perspective on things you you give a right sort of message or things that you want to convey are conveyed clearly but well presumably the things you want to convey are good things rather than like horrible horrible <laughs> opinions um which it must be a very sort of scary thought you know <laughs> Uh, doubly so when we go something with digital circus which looks very kids friendly but it probably isn't at least not, I, I can't imagine it's going to be uh, there's a lot of um not so that kids i guess can't have existential crises but um it's very much a sort of um show at least to me which uh, has strong themes of sort of like um existentialism in my opinion um of course everyone's interpretation may be different and there's um certainly some sort of mental health like underlying um commentary going in there which is not to say that kids can't have storylines related to this or can't you know understand these sort of things but I, I at least feel like the way it should be given um or the way the information is presented should probably be rather different no <laughs> anyway um i think i'm the only thing i can really say well not the only thing i can really say about it one major thing i can say about it is i'm just impressed at like how well developed these sort of things are like um the studios themselves and they're not like some big bug big budget studio as far as i'm aware but the animation and like digital circus is really smooth it's lovely it's like actually one of the best animations i think i've seen um in an animated show not so but i've watched a huge amount of animated shows but i've seen enough clips of animated shows to <laughs> um get impressions of them and i suppose that's a benefit of being maybe a smaller company is the fact that um i'm sure the, these sort of studios are made out of love for the animation rather than by a media company in the first place whose um, bottom line is the profits right not to say that um, I'm sure there isn't some sort of profit-based ideology within the studios um, or anything like that, but it's just more like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I'm impressed because it's not only that and it's also of like a really high polished quality. And also the voice acting is like really good in the show, it's like surprisingly amazing. There's, there's lots of like small details here and there, which is fun. Is the show perfect? No, I don't think so. I think it's, um, 
I mean, I, I don't want to judge it from just like two episodes because I think it's better to judge as a whole. Uh, I think certainly the thing which and there seems to be a recurring thing now I think about because Husband Hotel I think also suffered from it is pacing issues tend to be a little bit strange um like Husband Hotel I haven't watched it but I've heard basically it feels like it goes at like breakneck piece, piece, pace there's not a lot of room to breathe and Digital Circus I think episode one certainly was it felt quite fast paced it felt quite sort of like random at times it um as it sort of like jumps back and forth and the second one I, I think was it felt like it was going pretty fast for a while and then it slowed down like right the way down and then it goes like really fast again towards the end <laughs> which is um i mean pacing's a hard thing to get particularly right it's like how do you know if a pacing's right well you kind of have to have the entire storyline through and through to the end um and you see it all together and only then like with a fresh mind can you really be like hmm this pacing feels a little bit off and how do you rectify it? i don't know um again i'm not like a screenwriter i'm not a script writer or anything like that it's just a difficult thing but i'm, I'm just constantly amazed at how like high quality it is i suppose not to say that like it's a, oh it's like a show on the internet it's got to be like terrible or mediocre but i suppose it's just more rooted in like the shows i used to watch online i suppose like these online shows back in the real early days of youtube or something i'm, I'm trying to think like um like early red versus blue of course was just something made in like a um, man versus machine i remember this like tf2 animated series i watched that was like the adventures of pyro or something which was <laughs> not exactly a series or something but about six of my mind these things have much more rudimentary i suppose origins and i suppose that's kind of like what i have as in my mental image of like oh online animated like community not community made to show and when i really got to think about like this is just sort of like indie if anything it's kind of like an in-between of like what that weird starting point of someone in their own room like on gmod or something and these big budget shows of like i don't know hasbro came to mind immediately but <laughs> they're not really like a movie studio but like disney uh things like that this is like a, a an in-between well okay disney's probably a bad example because that's like a really big business what's like a small business who like an of a smaller big um, business, I don't know. I can only think of Studio Trigger. But Studio Trigger is also like really big. Studio Ghibli, <laughs> it's, it's like decently big still. Um, but it's like an in between, you know, like these indie. Well, I don't know if it would necessarily be considered indie. I, I just guess it's you know, if anything, it's kind of like showing a passion behind the project. I'm sure there's a thousand more of these indie projects which actually just kind of like sucked in the end. But these are just the ones you hear about anyway but long and short of it i suppose is i, I certainly have a lot of uh, empathy or sympathy well, empathy is wrong word because i guess i've not been in this situation uh sympathy for um i should check her name i feel like her name is goose work oh whoops <laughs> i accidentally switched scenes there to my drawing scene and clip studio paint is not open so <laughs> it was just a black screen there for a second um because this wireless mouse is a thing I find but it goes to sleep if I don't use it for uh, a while and like when it wakes itself up it doesn't go back to like max speed or like the speed it was at to begin with so then like for the first like half a second the mouse moves really slowly and then it goes back up to speed goose works right oh it's goose works with an x not with a ks as I thought um <laughs> it's, apparently she's tweeted something 16 hours ago just of I assume her OC just going oh god <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, no, 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 my heart, the no, sympathy goes out. And one incredibly stressful, just to, I'm sure, release episode two after so much hype has built up over episode one, like an unimaginable hype for I'm sure any creator just to be like, oh my god, what is happening? Like my content has hundreds of millions of views. The fandom is massive. All these fan works and etc. 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 Are they gonna like the rest of what I do? But also, I suppose uh, <laughs> the scary part of having such a online uh, community like uh, that's like where the core i suppose of a fandom has spawned i mean you you see the, the the things of like what's happened to like undertale fandom homestuck fandom friday night funkin fandom that's the one i forgot earlier uh, five nights at freddy's uh, these sort of like online fandoms which um certainly gained a reputation i suppose by some more bad actors within the community i guess i'd just be kind of scared of that sort of thing like i don't want to get um hate mail or something like that just for creating something which someone disagreed with, like with the story direction i i took or something in a show which i put like my own like heart and label of love into and just because they disagreed with it because maybe they wanted a, a happy ending maybe they wanted to like ship two different characters or something together and they didn't end up together and it's just like it's just i don't know basically what i'm saying is like where people who are these bad actors bad faith actors on the internet are truly truly giving everyone else just a horrible time because of existence and i guess it's kind of like this why i sort of like that back and forth some people are just straight up bad faith actors and some people are just like young teens who probably don't know any better or something like a 
if you i'm not, not going to say that you should raise your child on the internet because you certainly shouldn't <laughs> but um and i'm not saying that you should wait hold on wait on no, right invert that statement i'm not saying like the internet is an inherently bad place or anything like that but you know depending on what sort of impressions that you get for things you learn it can certainly give a wrong sort of behavioral expectations which most people i would say certainly grow out of but <laughs> i don't know I, I just think back to the fact that i was like in primary school using stuff like twitter and youtube and all these social media uh, things it's a, it's a fantastic uh, i guess consequence that i basically never posted anything online ever because i always wanted to lurk instead of actually interact with communities um because I, I don't know maybe i would have said well okay i, I don't think i would ever gone to hate me but i probably would have said some stupid things <laughs> i would tweet being like oh my god i can't believe this show did xyz i'm so sad no actually now i think about it, i don't think i would do something like that <laughs> that sounds incredibly strange even for me um but i you know what I, I i absolutely would do i'd probably make some really terrible like video analysis episode on each of the characters and then when like an episode comes out where it has like a different art direction or like i you know what would happen i would build up from these like okay let, pretend i am now 13 years old or whatever finding digital circus for the first time i would watch the shows i would like obsess over it. i'd be like whoa okay one i'd probably make my own oc two i'd be like predict exactly what i think the show should be like how i would write the story and then when the story doesn't develop in the way that i thought it would i'd be like what this is outrageous and then i'd like do these video essay analysis okay but this is also no, this is a really i suppose different a uh, timeline of like i suppose i had to be young in this exact moment and also wanting to <laughs> like post stuff online <laughs> um in my teen years rather than in my 20s years um and i had like these video analyses on like what each of these characters represent and then like it, it would turn into some sort of weird like cynical critique uh, as things go on when really you know the creator's just like creating the vision that she had for the show and just because it doesn't align with mine doesn't mean it's necessarily right or wrong um i suppose you can come at things from a much more literary and an analytical perspective but it's not like 13 year old me had that sort of I mean, even me right now like i don't think i've consumed enough media to have that high level of analytical media literacy not to say that I, i'm not i'm media illiterate and like i can see underlying themes i can understand character arcs and traits and choices made and these sort of things but i think the big thing that really stops it is the fact i've not really made any like large-scale media or like had that go when trying, like, trying to direct or write something long form which i yeah I, i'm gonna be honest that uh, you probably need some experience to be able to critique um not everything like i guess it goes back to that sort of thing like if you're a chef if, if you are a food critic do you need to know how to cook uh, it's the sort of thing where it's like no i guess you don't have to there, there's like a lot of elements which you don't need experience of cooking to be able to critique you know like the flavors not like the flavor of a taste profile uh, really change but by being a chef you gain a, like a whole new layer of understanding which i think actually elevates it to being like feeling like proper food criticism rather than just being one who just eats and normally this is something which is fine because those people sort of like go hand in hand but um, certainly i suppose will be um no, i don't even know what i'm going now um and i guess myself i'm guilty of this by turning my animal crossing episodes into like a soapbox of my random thoughts and here and there but it's much more easier to i suppose make these sort of like video analyses essays on things even if you aren't necessarily educated on the subject in the first place right i mean but i feel like there's been numerous scandals which is oh, scandal is the wrong word drama i suppose about like people who are like oh they didn't actually do their research on these mean these videos they just like talk in rhetoric techniques and use these like um specific speech inflections and patterns which makes it seem like they speak with authority or experience when they don't you know <laughs> um when really I, I suppose they should be treated until like you get like credible sources behind them as well it's just sort of like musings of a random person right which not to say that we don't hold any in her value not to say that they don't strike to the truth it's just more like it shouldn't be taken as like a gospel no, no, nothing really should be taken as a gospel to be honest in this sort of field because it's all quite like opinion based in the end um i guess that's kind of what i'm saying so <laughs> but long and short what i'm saying is like i hope i hope Gooseworks survives this all ordeal you know I, ho I hope she comes out in the end being like wow i have a real appreciation for the, the good parts of the fandom which i'm sure is developing because of the show she's created and she doesn't end up presenting it but that, that's just my wish <laughs> apart from that um yeah i don't know go watch it episode one i thought was pretty good episode two i preferred more because i think it's more like my sort of stylings and pacings like a the, the, the conversational themes it explores i i, I think it certainly aligns with things which interest me more love that new uh, character you know the one i'm talking about and yeah no more spiders than that <laughs> um i don't know what i'm gonna title this episode i suppose but like um i guess it's like a creator watching a creation 
<laughs> in that sort of sense. And that sort of weird danger and anxiety, I think, that comes with it. Anyway, I'm gonna, I need to go record some Okami right now. So, if you haven't been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Like, comment, subscription, share. It's greatly appreciated. Socials, Discord down below. Hope we see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So, until next time, bye bye for now. This is where I'd end with a quote um, from the show, if I could remember one. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. I'm sure I can think of one. <laughs> the only one I can think of is, oh, not candy. <laughs> but that's a terrible one. I don't know. I can't do any voices. Oh, ready to wrap things up? Normally I do this off camera. Okay, bye-bye for now.